And that's our focus this morning, looking at the fight against corruption and with specific reference to a very a recent judgment by the appeal court that says that the EFCC lacks the powers to punish serving judges. And joining us to look at this is uh, uh, a lawyer, Mr. Adib, Adibarua Ebung. I want to thank you so much indeed for coming on Sunrise Daily this morning. He is indeed a legal practitioner. Thank you. Good morning. You have heard about um, how this has come to be up to this point where uh, is it, it looks like a tussle between the EFCC's uh, area of jurisdiction and what the NJC will have with respect to punishment of an erring or perceived punishment to be meted on an erring judge. What do you think is the way forward on this? Well, there's no tussle really uh, between the uh, prosecuting agencies, EFCC, ICPC, the police, the Attorney General, and the National Judicial Council. There is no tussle at all. And I, I, I must uh, appeal to the prosecuting agencies, especially the EFCC, not to be demoralized by this judgment. What has happened is the uh, judiciary is asserting its autonomy and independence. The judiciary is placing all Nigerians equal before the courts because judges must approach cases with their eyes closed. And what has happened is no strain to us lawyers because in this country, we have always maintained that there is a particular method by which you take cases to court. Right from 1962, the Supreme Court has laid down a procedure by which you take cases to court, any case at all, corruption case, maritime cases, landlord and tenant, husband and wife, any case. So it says when you want to go to a court, you ask yourself three questions to go to that court. Is the judge before whom you are sitting, is he competent? Is he, is he qualified to be a judge, to sit over you at all? After you have answered that question in the affirmative, you then proceed to say, is the matter properly before the court? In other words, have you fulfilled all condition precedent to enable you to bring that matter before the court? If you, have, if you answer that within your mind in the affirmative, you then proceed to the last one. Are there features in your case that makes it impossible for the judge or the court to adjudicate on it? We call this the Bible of jurisdiction. It's known to all lawyers, law teachers in the FCC, in the Attorney General's office. That case is called Madukolo and Ikendilim. It's our Bible in the legal profession. Judges know it, lawyers know it. There's no question about that. We settled this long ago since 1962. So if you cannot answer any of these three questions on whether the judge is competent, whether the condition president has been fulfilled, whether due process was observed, or there is anything in the case that denied jurisdiction, you go back the, the, and but, put your house in order. So but, that's what the judges are telling the FCC. They are not saying that the FCC lacks power to prosecute judges. But this, we, takes, we us, must read this, that takes, us, this takes us to um, Section 158 of the 1999 Constitution, looking at our vested powers. Uh, it confers prosecutorial powers for serving judges only. Uh, to the NJC. But does that in effect mean that uh, for the judges who are serving now, they are being protected and having that level of immunity to be judged by or to be tried or to be prosecuted? No, no, not at all. Uh, and I'm sure many people have not read this judgment. Uh, uh, this is the judgment. I have read it. I have taken time to study it. The judges or the Court of Appeal has not said anything like a blanket immunity for judicial officers, nothing like that at all. What do you mean by blanket immunity? In other words, they have laid a distinction to say judges are human beings. They are ordinary Nigerians. They are citizens. If a judge has committed a criminal offense, raping a citizen, for instance, or killing another citizen, he has no protection. The policeman will grab him and charge him to court. He has no such protection at all. And it's stated in this judgment, not in one place, not in two places. It's characterized clearly in that judgment. They made that distinction. They're not giving any immunity to judges against criminal prosecution. What they said, however, and this is what we should explain, is to say 